Well, in the last number of months, the cost of home heating oil has increased by about 12% on average. Uh, I have to say to you that uh, compared to this time last year, um, it's actually about 40% higher. And that's coming from a background where um, I know last year was an exceptionally cold winter. We don't know what this one is going to be like. But if you take, for example, that uh, particularly the elderly and people with disabilities, um, they were subsidising that by electricity and the cost of electricity, uh, that they received the electricity units, as you know, and that has been reduced by about 20%. And electricity increased at the 1st of September, on average, 14%. So you can see that um, people who are dependent on heating from electricity, for example, are about a third worse off this year um, than they were last year in terms of a combination of the uh, free units that they were getting and the increase that has been implemented by the electricity companies. And that's at a time when most of these people who are either pensioners or disabled or on um, uh, fixed long-term incomes um, have a static income. Uh, In fact, their income has uh, decreased over the last two years rather than increased. Uh, Now, international oil prices, like most people, to me, they're an absolute mystery. I can't work out how the price of diesel is rising at the pumps at the moment uh, and is almost on a par with petrol. But it all feeds into the increase that you were talking about here in home heating oil. There's no indication this is going to stop anytime soon, is there? No, this isn't going to stop. Uh, And if there is... uh, uh, You see, to be honest about it, my view is that government has an interest in the cost of uh, fuel... um, and home heating oil and um, uh, fuel at the pumps and electricity rising because they get 13.5% VAT uh, on all of this. So the higher the price goes, the more the state gets in VAT returns. And, of course, this uh, proportionately far more uh, is spent by um, the poor or people on fixed incomes uh, on VAT payments than any other group. Um, And we have called on the government uh, a number of times, particularly in the case of electricity, uh, to cap the VAT, say cap the VAT at, uh, um, say, on 100 euro, 13 euro 50 cents. So in other words, even if your ESB bill uh, or your electricity bill was, say, 150 or even 200 euro, which wouldn't be unusual in the wintertime, that the VAT on that would still be just uh, 13 euro and 50 cents. Of course, they're not willing to do that. But it means that more and more people are coming under pressure to the point where some elderly people, uh, we believe, uh, won't be able to keep themselves warm this winter. The carbon tax for coal and briquettes, that was announced by the government in December of 2009. It's never been applied, as the government is doing its sums now in the run-up to the budget. Do you think that's one of the things they could implement and uh, that would feed in to what you're talking about? Yes, it's my understanding that they're going to increase the carbon tax and that will have an effect on on, on, uh, coal. It will also have an effect on petrol and diesel and so on. That will show up the cost of living right across the board because, as you know, within this economy, all goods are transported, uh, be they to the supermarkets or people going to work or or wherever. Uh, And that means that they will get less diesel um, and petrol and fuel uh, for their euro. So that means that uh, um, it's going to shove up the cost on them and the effect will be a a follow-on rise in the cost of living and people will have the same amount of disposable income or if we're to believe what's talked about in the budget, many families um, will have less with the cuts in children's allowances and increase in in the VAT rate. Uh, The standard VAT rate is increasing by 20%. It's gone up by two points. What are families doing right now, Michael? Because people probably would have bought maybe half a tank of home heating oil. That would have set them back about €500, Euro, saying later in the year I'm going to maybe give a second fill. If the winter is warm, I won't need the third fill. Are people putting it off um, to the point at which they don't know whether they're going to be able to afford that third fill? I think you're absolutely right. And many people are struggling to survive and they're only putting on the heat for maybe uh, a couple of hours in, at night where as one time they used to be putting it on at, for maybe four or five hours. It means that they're um, cold. Um, some people are going to bed uh, much earlier uh, because they can't afford to stay up. Um, and that's an indictment on our economy. And all of this kind of stuff uh, affects the unemployed affects people with disabilities and it affects the elderly worst of all. Normally the Consumers Association along with all the consumer bodies would tell people look shop around for the best value see what's out there. 
if this is going to be an increase across the board, increase in carbon tax, an increase in the VAT or whatever the case is, it's not much the consumer can do about this. Yes, we would still urge consumers to shop around, but if you take in terms of electricity, um, three main uh, service providers in the economy, um, all of them increased their prices by about 14%. Don't really believe there's any real competition in the marketplace. And the same in relation to um, petrol and diesel. There is no real competition in this economy. Perhaps part of the reason is because it's so small. But you recall that um, when oil was... $150 uh, a barrel, um, we were paying, uh, I think, less than the price we're paying now at the pumps. And petrol at the, at the, uh, the a barrel of oil at the moment is, I suppose, averaging $80, $85. Well, can you, can you just tell me why then we are paying more than we were when oil was at its peak? Well, there's someone, someone the size of the oil companies uh, are the governments. Um, are making a killing on it. As you know, over 70% of the price of a litre of petrol goes to the government in taxation. One would imagine we would have loads of money. Uh, it seems to me like as if they're burning some of it up in the cars. Michael, is this the same argument they're talking about raising the VAT rate, saying they have to get revenue from somewhere? So they're going from 21 to 23% uh, in the budget if that's what's agreed at Cabinet, which we're assuming it will be. That the net effect of that is people are going to spend less. The net effect of what we're talking about in relation to fuel, exactly the same thing. They're going to be spending less. It's ultimately a self-defeating policy. It is a self-defeating policy. Uh, and the more people you put out of work, like the cuts in, in numbers of jobs, um, the cuts, you, you'll have recalled that last week they said that they're going to reduce the public service number of jobs uh, by 25,000. Not, not alone uh, are you reducing the level of service to the consumer that these people provided. You're reducing and um, the spending power that these people had and you're taking more and more money out of the economy. That's what you're doing. So instead of, of, of um, um, I suppose, um, trying to lift all boats and um, trying to um, keep all uh, souls afloat, what you're doing is you're depressing the economy for the, because the more money you take out of it, the less people will have, the less people... Um, will spend. So if somebody can't afford to uh, buy the loaf of bread, then uh, there's no point in the store carrying the loaf of bread, there's no point in the baker baking the loaf of bread, and there's no point in the farmer growing the wheat. It's a vicious circle. Michael Kilcoyne, Chairman of the Consumers Association. Thanks for talking to us on Talk Lunchtime, Michael. You're welcome.